Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this one I'll show you how to make these amazing but very simple meat and potato pies. And once again I'll be using my very popular easy hot water crust pastry method for these delicious individual meat and potato pies. This is also one of those great recipes for using up any leftover meat you have sitting in your fridge. It's good with chicken, turkey, pork, beef and when the purse strings are a little tight, mince or ground meat can also be used in this recipe. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Ok, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, I'll start the recipe by making this delicious meat and potato pie filling. In a frying pan or a wok, add half of your olive oil from the ingredients list. Once it's hot, add your diced beef. Stir fry the meat until it has some colour. This shouldn't take more than 3 or 4 minutes. Once it's done, just set it aside for now. In a separate medium sized saucepan, add the rest of the olive oil and heat it up. Once the oil's hot, add your diced onions and stir fry for a couple of minutes. Once the onions start to go soft, you can add your garlic. Now you can add the meat to the pan. Make sure you get any meat juices too. Now give that a good mix. You can now add your 300 ml of beef stock. Now I'm using two beef stock cubes in mine. But if you have any natural stock, all the better. Next to go in is the tomato puree. Now mix that in. The seasoning for this pie filling I like to use quarter teaspoon of white pepper and a half teaspoon of salt. If you're a bit worried about your sodium intake, simply reduce the amount of salt in your cooking. You don't have to rigidly stick to the amount of salt in any recipe. Don't forget there's salt in the pastry too. Next is a good splash of Worcestershire sauce. Or as we simply call it in the UK, Worcester sauce. I'll give that a taste to see if it needs any more seasoning. And mine's fine. The final ingredient for now is two bay leaves. Don't be tempted to add your potatoes just yet. Wait until the last 10 minutes before putting those in. If you added them now, they'd just dissolve and disappear into the filling. Right, get the lid on and allow it to simmer for one hour. Once there's only 10 minutes left, you can now add your diced potatoes. These potatoes should still be quite firm at the end of this simmering time. But don't forget, they still have 50 minutes to cook in the oven when we bake the pies. It's all about the timing, guys. Give those a good mix in. Now bring that back to a simmer and finish off the cooking time. Once the time's up, the first thing to do is to remove the bay leaves. They've done their job now. Next thing is to thicken the filling. There's lots of ways you can do this, but I like to use corn flour or you may know that as corn starch, mixed with a little cold water. Simply add it to the filling and stir it in. It'll instantly start to thicken up. Right, that's done. Turn off the heat and let it completely cool before using it. I like to make mine the day before and let it sit in the fridge overnight. But if you want to cool it down quicker, just float the pan in a sink of cold water. 
and it'll be cool enough to use after about 30 minutes. Okay, on to making the hot water crust pastry. And this pastry has got to be the easiest and tastiest pastry you'll ever make. Start by putting your water in a small saucepan and onto a low heat. Firstly, add the lard to the pan. Now, lard is a pork product, so if you don't like or use pork ingredients, use a solid vegetable fat instead. Or you can get away with just using all butter. Next, you can add the butter to the pan. Now let that slowly heat up until all the fats have melted. And while that's heating up, get your flour into a large bowl and add the salt. Now mix those together and form a well in the middle. Soon as the fats have melted, add the hot liquid to the flour in the bowl. And using my trusty wooden spoon handle, I'll bring it all together. Once you have it roughly mixed, turn it out onto the bench and start to bring it together with your hands. It should be cool enough by now, but always check first. There should be enough pastry in this recipe to make four 5 inch individual pies. Form the dough into a rectangle and split it into three pieces. Wrap each piece in cling film as shown. Dividing and flattening the pastry out like this just helps it cool a lot quicker in the fridge. And before you say, I am using biodegradable cling film. Now get it into the fridge for at least one hour before using it. For these pies I'll be using our 12.5cm or 5 inch individual pie tins. And if you want to follow this recipe exactly, these pie tins are now available on our website if you're interested. Now I'm greasing mine with a little lard, butter or a solid vegetable fat will do the same job too. For rolling the pastry out, I'll be using our adjustable stainless steel rolling pin. Now these are also available on the website. These amazing rolling pins take all of the guesswork out of rolling your pastry out to the correct thickness. And for this one, I'll be using the 3mm or 1 8 spacer. On to rolling out the pastry. Now if your pastry has been in the fridge for more than 2 hours, take it out 30 minutes before you intend to use it. Just manipulate the pastry a little and the heat of your hands will soften it up, making it easier to work. For demonstration purposes, I'll make one large disc for the base of one of the pies and one for the lid of the pie. I'll do the rest off camera. Dust the bench with a little flour. Add a little to the pastry too. Right, I'll start rolling it out until I reach the required length, width and thickness. So, keep rolling to the required size. To prevent things sticking, continue dusting the bench and the pastry with flour as and when required. I'll be using these large pastry cutters to cut mine, but you can find something of a similar size to cut yours out. The pie basis for my tins needs to be approximately 17 centimeters or 6.5 inches. Right, that's the base pastry for mine cut. Now I'll cut the lid for the pie. And for the lids of the pies, they need to be around 14 centimeters, that's about 5.5 inches. I'll leave a link in the description box below the video to where you can get hold of these really handy large pastry cutters. You'll also need to re-roll all of your pastry trimmings by the way. There is enough pastry in this recipe to make all four 5 inch individual pies. There you go, four bases and four lids, all ready to go. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 3. Time to put these beautiful pies together. First job is to make the egg wash. Crack a large egg into a container, add a dash of milk and whisk vigorously until it runs off the whisk as a loose liquid. OK, and here's the filling after it's completely cooled. As you can see, it thickens even more when it's cold. As I normally do with my pie recipes, I'll fully assemble one pie from start to finish and do the other three off camera. 
Start by adding a base pastry to the greased pie tin. Gently work the pastry down into the tin. Flatten the excess pastry onto the lip of the tin. And for those girls and guys with long fashionable nails, take a spare piece of pastry and push it right down into the corners of the tin where the side meets the base. It's important to get it right down into that corner. Next, grab a fork and prick a few holes into the base as shown. Try to follow my evenly spaced pattern. This is called docking the pastry. It just helps stop the pastry base from bubbling up in the oven. Right onto the good bit. Spoon the filling into the base. And as this filling does expand some when baking, it needs to be level or even just below the top of the case. Once it's all in, tidy it up. Once your filling's in, get your egg wash and brush it all around the lip of the pastry. And I'm proud to say our pastry brushes now support our company name. Try not to get any wash between the pastry and the tin, as this will stick like glue in the oven. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but it's a problem that can be easily avoided by being careful. And for belt and braces, brush a little around the edge of the pastry lid. Now line up the lid and gently press it down all around the lip of the tin. Using your fingers and thumbs, crimp all around the edge of the pie. This just takes a little practice, you sharp get the hang of this. Right, using the back of a knife blade, cut away the excess pastry. And why use the back of a knife, John? I can hear you say. It simply prevents damaging the non-stick coating on the tin. Once that's done, crimp all around the edge of the pie again. This tidies up the pie, but more importantly ensures a good seal when baking. Almost done. Cut two or three vent slits in the middle of the pastry. This prevents any hot air buildup in the oven. Now brush egg wash all over the lid of the pie. Once again, being careful not to get any between the pastry and the tin. And there you go. One beautiful looking pie all done and ready to bake. Make sure the ventilation slits are not clogged with egg wash. And here's all four completed and ready to go into the oven. FYI, you can freeze at this stage for future use. Simply defrost in your fridge for 24 hours and then bake as normal. Right, into the oven and set your timer for 50 minutes. And while those are baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. And also, book four in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. Also, the skeleton style oven gloves, now supporting our company name, are also available too. Just check out the link in the description box to our website store if you're interested in any of these items. Right, time's up on the pies. If yours is still a little light in colour at this point, just give them a few more minutes in the oven. But mine are done and looking fantastic. They're also kicking out an amazing aroma. Our kitchen smells absolutely divine at the moment. Now these are way too hot to do anything with at the moment. So I let them sit, still in the tins, on a wire rack for about 10 minutes or so. And when I come back, we'll have a look on the inside and give them a taste. Absolutely can't wait. Okay, they've been sitting there for a while now and it's time to give them a try. And here's what the bottom of the pie looks like. Nicely cooked. Right, I'll carefully cut one open and have a close-up look at the inside. They are still quite hot. And just look at that mouth-watering filling. What a beautiful looking pie. And here I go for a bite. 
This takes me back to my childhood. Early 60s, coming home from school in the winter months and one of these waiting with lots of mashed potatoes, peas and beefy gravy. Great memories. And they are absolutely delicious. Hope you try these everyone. Nothing better on a cold winter night. Big thumbs up as usual guys. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You Button supporters. And they are... Kevin Moore, David Tesch, Timothy Harrington, Trissa Cummings, Alan P. Hollins, Azokalum, Wild Will Weaver, Samuel P. Hastings, James K. 3250, and Gina McDowell, 5919. And there's also one who wishes to remain anonymous. Thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.